Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about exception reporting. I've had a video previously about exception reporting, but that was talking about creating it in Power BI when you know which column is causing error. Uh, but that is not always the case. There are a lot of situations that you have a lot of columns in your table, like 30, 40 different columns, and um, you want your exception reporting to cover all those columns if there is any error happening. So I'm going to talk about that in this video, how you can actually uh, cover for that kind of scenario and build the exception reporting using Power Query in Power BI. Let's go and check it out. Okay, now to show you how this works, I have a Power BI uh, report right here. In this Power BI report, I'm going to get data from an Excel file. Now this Excel file would have some errors in the data rows, which would cause um, um, error when I load the data into Power BI. Uh, I'll just get data from it. Uh, this is a customer information. Just to show you what happens if I just load that data into Power BI, I click on load and we'll see what happens. It is going to um, process that. Power Query basically is doing that, doing some transformations. In this case, it would be probably just some uh, generic data type transformation and then load it into Power BI because I'm using the import mode. There are other modes you can use as well. Import mode basically just create a copy of that data inside Power BI. Um, now, while this is loading, uh, I have to mention that this is a sample data, which is not a really big data set. Sometimes you have a huge data set and it might take longer to get the data loaded. Um, so once this data is loaded, I'll wait a little bit here. As you see, once this data is loaded and I'll zoom in here so that you can see how this works. So enabling my zooming tool. Here it is. So as you see, I have errors in this data set and I can click on those and see those errors, but that is not the case here. I don't want to go to Power Query to see the errors. The idea here is that I want those error information to be inside my report without seeing this at the time of refresh, without having those errors right now, because this is designed for a developer. A developer can come and see this and they can actually go and build their own, um, fi fix the data. But the, uh, the idea is that you have to build a means by which the user can see this. For example, if the report is in uh, Excel file um, in SharePoint, they can go and fix those and then the next refresh would fix those. So they would be able to see those errors. And that is what I'm going to show you. So I'll go to the transform data, which will bring Power Query Editor up here for me. And in this place, um, now that uh, customer table is right here. I have the customer table. Let me disable some of these column profile and column distribution because they would make things a little bit slower in this recording. So this is my customer information and uh, this is the original customer table. So I would rename this and call it customer original. And then I would create a reference from this. And if you don't know what the reference is, I have a separate video about that. Reference basically is a query looking at the original query. So this is going to be dim customer uh, without errors, right? So what I'll do, I'll say this is dim customer. To say that this is without errors, I click here and then I say remove errors. So this remove errors here basically means that you are removing any errors that is happening in any of the columns basically not a single column. If you select a column and then say, uh, go to the home tab and say, remove uh, rows, remove errors, you are looking only at that column. But because uh, you select this from the table identifier, this is giving you a function like this table that remove rows with errors, right? So this is going to be uh, the actual dim customer that I want my customer to work with. Uh, then I'll create another reference from this table and this second reference is going to be the error rows because I need that. I want my um, user to come and see those errors. And what I'll do in, in this one, I would say, um, I would say in this one, keep errors, right? So keep errors again from the same table identifier because we don't know which columns are causing the errors. So we'll, so we'll go there and I'll say keep errors, which would also create this um, function of Power Query behind the scene that says table that select rows with errors, right? So this is not specifically for a column. Now in this uh, 
how many rows? 10 rows. In these 10 rows, I probably have errors in different columns. For example, as you see, some of the errors are in birth date, some of them are in uh, other columns, right? Uh, so that is so far. I don't need that original column, uh, original table to be loaded, so I can basically disable the load of that table. Uh, and that is fine. I'm not using that in my reporting. So I have these two tables, the dim customer, which would be the main table for users to go and use it, the error table, uh, that would be for the users to find the errors. But uh, I still have to fetch the error details in here. Um, with just uh, having this table loaded into Power BI, I would still get an error. So what I'm going to do, because uh, I have like 30 different columns, as you can see, I have 30 columns in this table. Um, what I'm going to do is to unpivot this data. I'll keep the key column. In this case, it is customer key. I'll keep that and I unpivot everything else so that I would have the column name as one um, basically column and the value as another column. Uh, that is helping me to basically just fetch the error value itself rather than looking at every column because uh, 10 row, each of these having 30 columns, that is 300 values and not all of those are errors and problems. I have to focus on the problem. So what I'll do, I'll right click on this column and say unpivot other columns. Unpivot other columns basically will keep this column and unpivot the others and uh, all the column names are in this column. I'm going to rename that and call it column name uh, and all the column values are in this column value which I would keep it as value right now what I need in here is that only the values that are causing error so I'll uh, click on this value column and then I would say keep rows keep errors because we are focusing basically in this table only on error values uh, and this would only show me the columns uh, and the values that are causing error. Now the next stage would be to make sure that we get the error details. For that I can go to add columns, add a custom column. This would be similar to the previous video I've created. Uh, this custom column is going to give me the error value. I would use this keyword called try, very yes, useful keyword which you can uh, pass an expression. If that expression is correct, this try would return the value of that expression. If that um, expression cause an error, then this would return a record including the details of that error. So it would return something like this in this case. Uh, a record that has two values, a record is basically two columns in this case, one is has error, true, the other one the error itself which is another record. Now I know that this has error so I don't really need that. I'll expand it and I would only get the error part of it which is another record. So I'll expand that this would become another record. This is exactly similar to other video that I showed. And here you can see this is all the details of that uh, error itself. What is the value? Why it caused this to be error? And what is the reason of the error? All of those information which can be really helpful for your users. Then I'll click on here and I would say expand it. Use the original column name so that I would have error dot before every, every one of these. Click on OK. This would generate that list of details for me. I don't need the value column anymore mm, because I fetched all the details of it. So here it is. I know which customer key record on which column causing error and what is the error, what is the details of that. If I say home close and apply, uh, I would have two tables loaded inside uh, Power BI. One of them would be the error table, the other one would be the uh, actual customer table. The actual customer table would be the table that we use for um, for any of our reporting needs and the error table would be something that we would use for a specific page for troubleshooting. Let's say for example this is a troubleshooting page. I can for example just bring a card visual here showing the count here which would be basically count of errors. and a table visual showing the customer key which I don't want to be summarized plus um, column name and all of the error details information here. This would be a, a page of report in your Power BI that users would come here and see that this is like 
um, the last refresh caused some errors. There are 11 errors. Uh, some of these are because there has been like text values when a number is expected. So they go and fix it. The next refresh would automatically fix that. The benefit of this, of course, is that um, the users won't really need to um, um, wait for you as a developer to go and fix it. You are passing these to the end user to do that. So uh, basically what we have done, we used Power Query, we used the try function, we used unpivot, we fetched two different parts of that data as the uh, part of the data with errors and other part of the data without errors. With using all of these techniques, we managed to get the errors from all of those columns, all of those rows, of that table. I hope I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.